among free men, said Abraham Lincoln, there can be no successful appeal from the ballot to the bullet. And those who take such appeal are sure to lose their case and pay the cost. Violence breeds violence. Repression breeds retaliation. Let both sides unite in me. The command of Isaiah to undo the heavy burden and let the oppressed go free. We must go all in our daily lives live up to the age-old faith that peace and freedom walk together. Put it down. Put it down. Shall we end here, or is there anything else? No, I think that's great. I see. Thank you, Mr. President. Enmities between nations, as between individuals, do not last forever. However fixed our likes and dislikes may seem, the tide of time and events will often bring surprising changes in the relations between nations. Neighbors. We can still hail the Russian people for their many achievements in science, in space, in economic and industrial growth, in culture, in acts of courage. Among the many traits the peoples of our two countries have in common, none is stronger than our mutual abhorrence of war. Almost unique among the major world powers we have never been at war with each other. And no nation in the history of battle ever suffered more than the Soviet Union in the Second World War. At least 20 million lost their lives. Countless millions of homes and families burned or sacked. A third of the nation's territory, including two thirds of its industrial base, was turned into a wasteland. A loss equivalent to the destruction of this country Eastern Chicago. Today, should total war ever break out again, no matter how, our two countries will be the primary target. It is an ironic but accurate fact that the two strongest powers are the two in the most danger of devastation. All we have built, all we have worked for, would be destroyed in the first 24 hours. A grand global alliance, north and south, east and west, that can assure a more fruitful life for all mankind. Will you join in that historic effort? It was time for Prince Vasily to go, and the comrades with whom he had campaigned so valiantly drew close. About them, the sound of the weary men hung in the cold air as the soldiers tended their horses. The man they had come to call their friend smiled. You must remember what I've done here today, he said, and keep it close to your heart. There are those who may think it dishonorable, but I succeeded in uniting all parties. And besides, my idea is simple and clear. I say, let those who love what is right join hands and let our whole watchword be action of virtue. Prince Vasily nodded once to his company, and without a further word, he turned and walked away.